Okay, there is a couple things that we need to kind of go over when we're trying to do these complex shapes for doing this changing mandala. Um, the biggest thing is we do know how to make the, you know, complex shapes using um, begin shape, end shape, vertex, and quadratic vertex. Um, so we're going to use those and be able to build this. Now this is going to be using functions and loops uh, to be able to redraw them. But there's a couple things that we need to do as kind of helper code. We need to know exactly where center is when we're drawing these shapes to make things a lot easier. We also need to properly map um, our mouse position instead of giving us a mouse position based off this top left, we need it to actually give it in relation to the center of our screen so that when we draw the shapes here, we can properly translate them wherever we want to go, reuse them, and be able to make cool designs. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and walk through this piece um, on how to do this. And I want you guys to be able to follow along, understand the process. You guys are going to need to do the same thing for your guys' changing mandala. Okay, now the biggest thing that we need to have is we need to build a little bit of helper code stuff on there. What we've seen on there is we had um, basically a uh, set of crosshairs and a center point so that we can mark exactly where the center is so we can draw around that. That makes things a lot easier. So I'm going to um, build a couple functions. I'm going to build one and I'm just going to call it uh, draw crosshairs. Okay, and this is where I really want to draw my crosshair. Now it's going to be based off of where my center point is on my mandala. So um, in my draw, we're going to just go ahead and just change that now because since we're drawing the mandala, it's not going to change. So in here, we're just going to translate at the very start, translate to width divided by 2 and height divided by 2. So this will work with any size of canvas I have. Um, and then what we need to do is we need to actually um, draw that out. So I'm going to start with push pop because I don't want anything to mess it up. Push pop. And then in here, um, I want to, I'm going to play around with uh, stroke weight and stuff like that. But if I put point, point, um, this is just drawing a single one pixel point. Now we can't even see it. It's so small on my canvas, um, even if I'm drawing it. So in here, I just need to draw it at the bottom. I'm going to do draw cross hairs. We run it. We barely see that point. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to actually kind of change um, the stroke weight. So I'm going to do that in here. Stroke weight. And let's go to, I don't know, let's say five. We run it there. That's a little bit easier for me to see. Um, and then after I have that, so I have this point. Um, I think it would be easier if I end up drawing a set of crosshairs so that I can kind of use that to measure and try to balance out um, my stuff. Okay. Now with these set of crosshairs, I'm going to make it easy for me to determine um, roughly where I'm looking at when I'm trying to size my stuff. So I'm going to um, draw some lines. Now the line function is really easy. I just give it a starting point, an ending point, and it will draw a line from that point. So I want to draw a line. Um, now remember, I am centered here. Okay. Um, so if I want to draw to the left of this, um, I'm going to say how much to the left I'm going to go in my X direction and then how much to the right I'm going to go in my uh, X direction. So my first point is going to be at that same height because I want a, just a parallel line. Um, let's say I'm going to go minus 30 to the left and it's at zero on the height. And then my point on the right is going to be um, 30 over from that point and then it's going to be zero up or down. Now when I run this, I have that line. Now that's covering up my point, so that means that I want to just change my stroke weight in here back down to, let's say, 1, because I just need to see it. Okay, so there we go. That makes it a little bit easier. Now I'm going to do the same thing, though, but I want to do a vertical line. So that means that I want, um, from the center, I want to move 0 left or right, um, but I want to move, let's say, minus 30. So I start at the top, and then I want to move from my next point, 0, 
and positive 30 uh, for being um, down on the canvas. So this is my minus 30, this is my positive 30, this is my minus 30, this is my positive 30 for the x, this is for the y. Okay, so there, that gives me a set of crosshairs. Now I can do that, I can use this um, to be able to map out and draw shapes, okay? So the first thing that I would do is, let's say that I wanted to design like a petal, okay? Now I don't really need to use this anymore, I'm just going to minimize it because I'm not going to be touching it. Um, I want to draw a petal, so I'm just going to do function draw petal, okay? And um, when we are looking at like a changing mandala, let's just type up mandala, we can kind of see some of these shapes that we are looking at. Um, like this right here, that is kind of like a leaf design. We want to kind of approximate something like that. Um, now we can put stuff in there and this can be, you know, more complex. The petal itself, what we're going to do is we're going to create a function that's going to hold the drawing of the petal. And then after we get that, then we are going to use loops um, and modify this so that we can create many of them really easily. Okay, so to start off, we are going to use push and pop for our pedal. Um, and in here, uh, I am going to use begin shape and end shape. Okay, now I want to be able to have some helper code so I can see where I'm clicking on this. I don't really need a list, but I do need to see a um, where I'm going to be clicking in here, but I need it to be in relation to this point. If I just use mouse X, mouse Y, it's going to give me the distance from the uh, top left, the original origin. And since I'm translating the middle, I need to change that. So before I get any farther in trying to draw this, um, we need a variable that is going to be holding. And I'm going to call this center. And I'm going to use a, I'm going to store this as a vector. A vector is always has two parts. It's going to have a, uh, an X and a Y. Um, I can use that to find location and distance. Uh, but it's an easy way that we can actually group the X and the Y as a coordinate pair. Um, so we're going to say center is, and then I'm going to create a vector. Okay. And I'll just create it at 0, 0. Ultimately, I'm going to update this, but I want to properly initialize it. Okay. I also know that because I'm going to do this, if I'm going to rotate, I'm going to rotate in terms of degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and make that change really quick. All right. So this center, we're going to have to do this in the draw on the fly, um, which means that whatever point I'm translating to, I ultimately need to find the difference between this, uh, like my actual mouse point, um, minus the, uh, the width and the height, uh, or the center of that point. So um, I want to, because I already translated, now I need to do some calculations. So center, the x position, this would be, um, for when we do a vector, we always have an x and a y. So I can use the dot. Um, dot syntax to be able to access that X and I can set it. So I want the mouse X minus that center X right here that we translated to. I want to calculate this. So I'm going to subtract it and put it here. And I'm going to also do that with center Y is mouse Y minus the height divided by two. Okay. Now if I go ahead and put this as a um, let's say console.log, I'm going to use um, a string literal, and I want to just do this as a coordinate pair, center.x, so this is calculating for me, and let's do the next one, center.y, calculate it for me. All right, let's see what that looks like. Okay. So now here, when I bring my mouse to that point, I should get really, really close to or be able to actually get zero, zero. That's what I want to see. If I moved to the left of this crosshair, I should get negative 30 comma zero because I'm zero up or down, but I am 30 to the left of that center point. 
Okay, so this is actually giving me a lot of information. Now with this, being able to get some data on here, I can actually start modifying how I'm drawing my stuff. So let's go back down to our pedal now. And um, whenever we're going to use any type of curve or anything, uh, I need to start with a vertex point. Now what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this set of crosshairs to make sure that I'm being symmetrical. And any values that I'm doing that are going to end up being negative over here, I basically just need to reverse to make it so it's symmetrical along the um, the y-axis. Okay, um, so doing that, I'm going to start with a point, and I let's say that I wanted to start at this bottom right here. We already know that that is going to be, if I'm exactly on it, it's going to be zero left or right, and it's going to be a positive thirty because we're going down. So I'm going to just write vertex, and then I'm going to write zero comma thirty. That is my first point, and then I want to build a quadratic vertex. Um, now here, I can't say mouse X, mouse Y for my bend point because that will still give me um, this value. So I'm going to do it just so that we can see, and it's not going to look like what we want. Uh, but then I can choose my next point of where I want to bend. So I'm going to bend and say I want to bend to like right here. Um, at that point right there. And that is 0, comma, negative 15. So I'm going to go ahead and write that uh, 0, comma, negative 15. And when I run, I should actually, uh, you know, call that draw pedal. That would be smart. Draw pedal. There we go. Okay. So see how it, it's not really working for me because it's still operating like it's that top left. And that is going to be hard for me to calculate, especially because I'm drawing in terms of this. So I need to make the change. I'm not doing mouse X, mouse Y. I'm using my converted points. I have translated those values in terms of the center. So I'm going to use center X and center Y. So instead of doing this, it's center.x, center.y. Rerun, and now it's bending appropriately what I would expect. So I can make a cool shape. Let's say I make it kind of something like this. I'm looking at those values, negative 22, 21. So that is what's going to go here, negative 22, negative 21. There's my, oops, I think it was this. Okay, there's my bend. I'm going to do another one that's going to be almost exactly like this. Okay, the only difference is, so now I need the other side, which means um, I started at the top and I need to come back down to this point. So this point right here should be my starting vertex point. Okay, so I'm going to do 0, comma 30, rerun. And then here I'm bending, not to the left, I'm bending to the right but my height could still be the same. So now I have a perfectly symmetrical shape and I use the crosshairs to help build it. Okay, so here is my pedal. Now with the pedal inside of this push pop, I could translate. All right, so let's say that I wanted to translate up. Um, so I don't want to go any over to the left or the right, maybe on this, but I wanted to go up. So I'm going to minus 100 off of that. And now I shifted it up. Okay. I could do smaller values and now I have it, you know, around. So what I want is I basically want these pedals to go all around, um, at, you know, prescribed spots. So maybe here, 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 and I want, uh, ones in between. So that's really, I want eight shapes. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify this draw pedal. Instead of me having to type in here, I want to be able to do this kind of on the fly. So I'm going to change this to, um, passing in some requirements into my function. So I want to pass in an X value and a Y value um, into my function, and then that's ultimately what I'm going to be using to translate. So I will translate based off of this, like this. Now, that is my draw pedal. Um, that makes it a lot easier. When I come in here, I'm going to go 0 over and um, say negative 70. Okay, my code still looks the same, 
Um, now what I want to do here is I kind of want to abstract this out. Instead of me just drawing one petal, because I could draw multiple petals, I could rotate, um, let's say, 30 degrees. That's rotating the actual canvas itself. Um, so what we want to do is we want to um, use, say, push and pop, um, draw using loops to draw all of these petals, okay? So <clears throat> we're going to kind of abstract this out. So we have this, this one petal. Now let's go ahead and we're going to do function draw petals. And for right now, we're not going to give it any requirements. We're going to start with push and pop. Yeah, I can untype today. Okay. And then inside of here, we are going to build using a for loop. Okay. Now remember, for loop has three parts. Um, it has a starting value and uh, ending conditional value and then how we're going to increment and decrement. So I'm going to do for let index is equal to zero. Index will go to however many that I want. So let's say um, in this case, I wanted to do eight. Um, but I want to change this and then we want the index to increase up by one each time. So it makes it easy for us to do this. Um, now for us to draw the heart, now we could draw or excuse me, draw the petal. We can pass in what we put here, which we got as zero comma negative 70 that we're using. Okay. Now, I did draw that, but I need to rotate off of that. So rotate and let's rotate. Um, we need to find a value. So 360, if we were going to do eight, we are going to have to do some, some math in here. 360 divided by eight gives me Oh, that's why it was weird. 45. So I need to rotate 45 degrees each time. So let's check that out. Now I did not call it yet. So we have draw petals. Instead of us doing this here now, we are just going to call draw petals. Now draw petals is calling in here. We have this loop. It's going eight times. It's drawing a petal at that distance and then we're rotating 45 degrees and then we're drawing another one. Now there are some things in here that if I could reuse this, draw petals and be able to pass information, like maybe how many times I want it, um, how much I want to rotate and the distance away, I could reuse this function multiple times. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to change this draw petals to be a little bit more exact for us. Um, I want to put in a couple more variables. I want to know the number of petals I want to draw, the angle that I want to rotate by, and let's say the distance that I want from the center. Okay, so these are my new variables. They temporarily go in here and I can assign them into here. So the number, this would be how many times I want to do it. The angle right here, this would be, I'm going to pass in that value. And then when we call this draw petal right here, it's going to be the distance. All right. So those three things, I'm replacing these values in here. So now let's watch this. So I, when I draw the petals, I say, you know what? I want to do eight petals at uh, rotating 45 degrees between each one, and I want to have this at minus 70. Now I can go ahead and run. It looks almost the same. But now, look, I can create, say, petals that are going uh, behind this, um, and maybe they are at 80. Now we have another set. Maybe I'm going to do one more. And we are going to add this in here and let's go to minus 90. Check that out. I'm making some cool shapes um, just by using some loops on there. Okay. Um, I could also, you know, take this and maybe I wanted to change how I was going to do my rotations on there. So instead of having eight, maybe I wanted to have 45 of those. Um, and I'm only going to rotate uh, by eight and let's make this uh, much closer. So we're going to do, let's say 50. See what that looks like. We get a cool 
more symmetrical shape. Now the only issue that we are possibly going to have, I'm looking at the edges, these edges line up really cool, okay? But what we don't end up having is um, they're all going to stack on top of each other, so the very last one is going to be stacked if you have them too close. Sometimes you can just have it where it's rotating on itself, so we could look at that. Um, the draw pedals is calling the draw pedal function, so inside of here, because I am translating, I could rotate this, say, 20 degrees, and now we have actually rotated all of the shapes. Now, this is going to do it for every single uh, pedal, unless I make this also a value, um, which might be how much I'm going to rotate in there. Um, so, those individual shapes I could actually do. So, if we wanted to quickly do that, we have an X and a Y. Um, let's also give it a... Um, we'll, call, we'll call it a, another angle because it doesn't exist anywhere else. And so I'm going to put it here. We have an angle in here. Okay. So when I draw a pedal, I need zero distance and I need whatever that angle is. Um, but I don't want to use the same variable here. If I write angle, it's going to fill in from whatever we're typing there. Okay. Um, so in here, I'll call this... Um, how about rotate angle or um, how about pe uh, pedal angle there we go P angle so we'll do that and I'll do that as the last requirement P angle so it's looking for those three things the X the Y and the P angle which is going to get temporary given these names X Y and the P and the angle and then that's what we're putting in here now when I go up to my draw pedals, I have to provide that P angle. So here, this first one, maybe I want to rotate it by zero. Here I want to rotate by zero. Here I want to rotate by zero. Here I want it to rotate by 20 degrees. And so now these are straight, but these ones are angled. Um, that gives us complete customization of what we want to do. Now, if you don't want them overlapping, then when you're trying to do these types of shapes, you're going to have to have them much bigger. Um, I could, you know, change the order. Maybe I'm going to copy this and put this in the back, but I want this to be closer to like 120. And it looks uh, a lot more symmetrical. I don't really see that overlap right there. Um, okay, and then we can change, you know, those angles and do all kinds of stuff on there. Um, if I wanted to completely flip it around so I'm look, looking at the bottom side of it, I can do that. Um, just by doing this, okay? So that's how we are going to be using um, functions and loops to be able to extrapolate out, make cool, unique functions. If I wanted to change these pedals and put a circle on top of it, I could easily do that um, right here. I could just put, you know, say a circle at this um, zero, zero with maybe a size 20. And now we just added a lot more complexity to all of our shapes. Okay, that's it for this little bit of instruction. Use this to be able to make your complex shapes and make them awesome for your mandala. All right, good luck. Have fun.